Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to use the ideal gas equation in calculations involving chemical reactions. In the last video we started using the ideal gas equation to calculate the volume and pressure of gases. Now we can also apply this equation to chemical reactions. Take a look at this question. 75 grams of calcium carbonate was heated to 900 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume in decimeters cubed of the carbon dioxide produced at atmospheric pressure. And remember that atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals. OK, so where do we start? Well, in any reaction where you're given the mass of a chemical, you can use this to calculate the amount of that chemical in moles. To calculate the amount in moles, we divide the mass by the molar mass. We're reacting 75 grams of calcium carbonate. Using the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass of calcium carbonate as 100.1 grams per mole. Dividing 75 by 100.1 tells us that our sample contains 0.749 moles of calcium carbonate. Now I've rounded that to three significant figures, but remember that in your exam you should only round at the very end. OK, looking at the chemical equation, we can see that one mole of calcium carbonate produces one mole of carbon dioxide. This means that we can produce 0.749 moles of carbon dioxide. Now we can use the ideal gas equation to calculate the volume of the carbon dioxide. Here's the ideal gas equation rearranged for volume. We've got 0.749 moles of carbon dioxide. The temperature is 900 degrees Celsius. To convert the temperature to Kelvin, we add 273. This gives us a temperature of 1173 Kelvin. The pressure is 101,000 pascals. Putting these figures into the equation gives us a volume of 0.0723 meters cubed to three significant figures. To convert this to decimeters cubed, we multiply by 1000. This gives us a final answer of 72.3 decimeters cubed. Coming up, I'll give you a question to try yourself. OK, here's a question for you to try. Four decimeters cubed of oxygen reacted with unlimited sodium oxide. The reaction temperature was 200 degrees Celsius and the pressure was 200 kilopascals. Calculate the mass of sodium oxide that reacted. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, in this question, we've been given the volume of oxygen that reacted. So we can use that to calculate the amount of oxygen in moles. Here's the ideal gas equation rearranged for amount of substance. The pressure is 200 kilopascals. We need to convert this to pascals by multiplying by 1000. This gives us a pressure of 200,000 pascals. The volume is 4 decimeters cubed. To convert this to meters cubed, we divide by 1000. This gives us a volume of 0.004 meters cubed. The temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. To convert this to Kelvin, we add 273. This gives us a temperature of 473 Kelvin. Putting these numbers into the equation tells us that we have 0.203 moles of oxygen to three significant figures. If we go back to the chemical equation, we can see that one mole of oxygen reacts with two moles of sodium oxide. We've got 0.203 moles of oxygen. This will react with 0.406 moles of sodium oxide. Now we can calculate the mass of sodium oxide that reacts. Here's the equation. The mass in grams equals the amount of substance in moles multiplied by the molar mass. We know that we've got 0.406 moles of sodium oxide. Using the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass of sodium oxide to be 62.0 grams per mole. Multiplying these together gives us a mass of sodium oxide of 25.2 grams. And that's our final answer. In the next video, we'll look at how to use the ideal gas equation to determine the molar mass of a chemical. Mm -hmm. 